All right, welcome everyone. We are going to get started in just a minute. Hold with us on the hour. We are getting started for an epic JK deal reveal with Julius and the pirate dog. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. Welcome back, everyone, to another JK Deal Reveal. Me and the Pirate Dog is with us. For those of you who don't know Noisette, she is Janie's Jitsu, almost 16 years old, this pirate. And we are having a blast right now in Florida, in the Pirate House. Yes, we're back. We're back to the Pirate House. And this particular property is a themed short-term rental property. And it will be on our bus tour starting tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., along with a few other handful of properties that we are going to showcase on our epic bus tour. So super excited to show everyone who's going to be part of the bus tour and hopefully you as well will be part of that bus tour uh, someday soon. So today on our deal reveal, we are going to showcase um, one of our members properties actually. This is a property that Julius closed and um, he seems to be having a little bit of problems connecting. So we're just going to keep on talking. We're going to keep, keep on going. Wait till he logs in and we'll be able to showcase his property. So he's going to show, he's going to give his experience and share with you the golden nuggets of his process to get to where is, he is today. So nice of you all to join in right now. Um, we are going to get started. I also want to let you all know that this weekend is super, super exciting because of this of our epic bus tour, but it's even more exciting for two other reasons. And if you check my Facebook, I did two posts about it. One, we are going to be uh, um, uh, picking the winner, not picking, but randomly, you know, we're going to have a winner for JK's second tub of love last year first of all what is the tub of love the tub of love is members from the community donate whatever they want to the tub of love they can donate their time their expertise their products their services whatever they want they throw it into the tub and one lucky winner from the community is going to win it all last year there was over fifteen thousand dollars of value in this tub of love that was won by samir one of our mastermind members and this year, Jen just finished tallying it up. We have over $30,000 of donation in the tub of love this year. And that was my goal. I wanted to double it and we did. So woo -woo, super exciting. Last announcement um, for our bus tour is that we are going to be revealing for the first time ever how Canadians can use their RRSPs to finance either in full a property purchase, just like this one here, a pirate house, or uh, the down payment for it. Either way, we can touch, finally, we can access that locked in liquidity that was trapped in our RSPs or TFSAs. So super, super exciting, excellent. Julius has just logged on just in time. Wonderful, let me promote you. And let's get started here. So uh, do what you have to do, Julius, because today we are going to showcase your deal 
which is a duplex in Cleveland, Ohio. So let's see if this is a deal or no deal at any point. Uh, let's hope this one's a deal uh, because Julius is on and he's excited for it. But let's get started deal reveal style. So Julius, let's just make sure that you can unmute yourself and you can, uh, you can hear us. Let's just make sure that all that is good before I jump in too far. Yes, testing. Can you guys fantastic. hear me? There we are. Hey, Julius, how are we doing? I'm doing fantastic. Excellent. Congratulations on your latest acquisition. Thank you so much, Kyle. I do also want to point out that Julius is in Florida as well. He will be part of the Epic Bus Tour starting tomorrow morning with uh, his, his sweet Lisa as well. And so we're all super, super excited to meet for the first time in person. Julius has been in the community for over a year and we still haven't met in person. That is just mind boggling. And so we're gonna break that tomorrow uh, during the tour. So let's get started. How about I do a quick deal reveal style for you just to make sure we don't lose our good habits. How's that sound? So from the start, we go to Trulia because we wanna have a good sense of what the neighborhood is about and seeing if we're comfortable. So we see it's an eight two. So this is actually a fairly large four bedroom, four bedroom uh, duplex. We see that there is color in this, uh, in this neighborhood. So we have to be comfortable with that. And we wanna make sure that um, our management is also comfortable with a little bit of color, a little bit of crime. Uh, why isn't it not loading? I don't know, but we have an idea here. It seems to be right on the border of a low and a medium low area. So um, not terrible, but it is, you know, on the border. So not too much of a concern here, but to know what we're, what we're getting into, always a good thing. Next, we're going to go see, because this is a duplex, let's go take a look to see what this property might be worth, right? So we have here a estimate of 71,000. Don't, don't trust the, the rents estimates because it's, it's taking eight twos as a comp and this is a four one per side, right? So we can have a rent estimate on how much cash flow that this is going to be producing for our good friend Julius here by seeing a four one and a four one what type of rents could we look at? So on the lower side here, look at this. We have here the subject property. Around it, we're surrounded by blues, and this is these are apartments. So I'd be leaning towards the 25th percentile. Uh, but this is actually still at a thousand here. So this is very high, um, very high rents for apartment um, standards. So I love that. I love that. So really quickly, what we can say is about a thousand dollars a month times two is a duplex, times 12. And then we're in Cleveland, so we might wanna put in a 0 0.6 factor. We're expecting about $14,000 NOI a year. This property was purchased, uh, I think my, my memory serves 67,000. Not bad, not bad at all for some quick numbers, right? So we're looking at a, basically at a 20 cap, if these numbers are accurate. So, Julius actually did close on this property and he produced, uh, he used the dashboard as well to further uh, dive into the numbers here. And so we have our eight, two, two, four ones, right? Um, but as we can see here, the rent per unit, 850 per side, right? Rental meter was closer to a thousand and here we have 850. So maybe there's some value add opportunity happening here. Um, the current rents versus what the market rents are, it looks like there's a nice gap happening here, and we're going to see if Julius seized that opportunity when he went to purchase it. Um, so he's got his basic assumptions here, putting uh, the property taxes, $1,000, insurance quite high at $1,700, I'm surprised. Utilities, those are also fairly high. Actually, quite high. The utilities are based on actuals. Uh, uh -huh. Just add in a little bit. The utilities are based on the actuals received uh, from the from the seller, mm -hmm. and I basically use one of the higher 
once and and project out 12 months. Um, there are some lower ones, right? I think I saw three months, there are, there are some are lower, but I was being conservative and I took the highest one and project out for 12 months. Beautiful. And for insurance, um, yeah, unfortunately the insurance, that's what the broker can provide from, from the best quote um, that is available at the market for that rate. Um, not sure if I will also mention, this is a duplex, uh, but uh, upon in, um, but when we inspect it, we found out the basements are not connected. So effectively, this is a semi-detached. You can even look at it as a two separate semi-detached buildings. Right on, which is not all that common in Cleveland, actually, to have your, your two units have a separating wall down through the basement. So wonderful. So we're conservative there. Um, I'm pretty sure if we dig a little bit deeper, we can get a cheaper insurance quote, probably closer to 12, 1300. So is it worth your time to save $400 a year? You make that call. Uh, Julius is even putting an advertising budget here of $50 per year, management at 10% and 17 total percent of rent for repairs and maintenance, 1700, 17%. He's putting $300 a month in repairs and maintenance. Whereas in a duplex, typically um, I advise people to be at least at 100. Uh, Julius almost tripled his repair and maintenance budget. And so you can see across the board being very conservative and still with his extremely conservative numbers because there's no way. If, if you tell uh, uh, sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt then. Uh, yeah. I, are you sharing the dashboard? I, think I I've, should be. I'm seeing questions. I guess I'm seeing the screen is not sharing the dashboard. So uh, no. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Thank you for letting me know. I'm going to reshare. And I hate when I do that. This makes a whole lot more sense. Look at this. All right. Apologies. Apologies. And that's probably what the, the, the chat was blowing up at me for, right? Hello. Not seeing the dashboard. My bad. So there basically Julius filled out the dashboard and he plugged in all of his numbers. And this is what I was saying here, the utilities, very high for a duplex, even though it's four bedrooms on each side, still very high. And he's putting in a $50 advertising budget, a total of 17% maintenance and 17% um, repairs and maintenance. So that's almost $300 a month that he's budgeting in, as opposed to when I say single family or duplex, you know, figure at least a hundred a month. He's putting in 300. So being very conservative across the board here and still uh, with these very conservative numbers, he's at a 12 cap, but we saw the potential based on market rents could be closer to 20 with, um, with obviously tightening these up. And, and let's discuss the rent situation, Julius, what's happening there? Well, the rent is when I got it, the, there is a vacant, uh, units. So one side is vacant, the other side is is occupied, and the other side is actually at at six fifty a month. So since I took possession, I've been putting on the tenant on a month to month um, intent to raise it eventually, but that tenant has been around for such a long time. So um, and he just paid up. I checked with my property manager. Um, yeah, he's he's good. He's, he 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 paid everything. Mm -hmm. But over the long term, there's a plan to obviously uh, we have to upgrade the, the the unit. And if you know if the tenant cannot afford it, then we might have to um, you know let let him go. So that is the longer term plan. And the other vacant unit, um, the plan is to renovate it. And we are exploring different renovation um, strategy and methods. Uh, but I did receive the latest, uh, I just checked uh, two hours ago with the property manager. I, I asked him if this unit is renovated and make it nice. Not, of course, not, 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 not luxurious, but reasonably nice. And what kind of rents can I get for four one? And he told me I should be able to get one thousand four hundred a month. Wow, for four one. Um, and he also told me that if I'm lucky to get a qualified session eight, he thinks it could be even more. 
I'd be very surprised about that statement. A section eight, uh, four bedroom above uh, above twelve hundred would be extremely surprising. But um, my fingers crossed. So basically, your manager is saying that um, these numbers are very reasonable. I took the lowest side here to be conservative, but it might be even higher. And we ran approximately a 20 cap performa quick trick off those numbers. That is impressive. Right on. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I think we put in the good groundwork to, to make it happen. So congratulations, Julius. Let's see what the, what, what the, the folk on the other side say. Is this a deal or no deal? And while they're chiming in, uh, Julius, why don't you share um, maybe your biggest takeaway out of this particular transaction and the reason you're going into this particular deal rather than some other opportunities that you might have been presented to? Okay, so there are, I also, when I buy, I always look at a few factors and the property itself is something I also and, and I, all, I also look at, and this property also being a little bit unique, um, you may not be able to see that on the picture, but it basically showcased two separate entrants that are on different side of the road. And they are, um, uh, you know, a base, base, like like I said, they are separate, like they're completely separate units. Right. So to me that this is a, you know, like buying two semi-detached houses. Right, and that's sort of the concept here. And I'm not just, let's say, a single family home. And, and, and of course, right, I'm not you know, cutting it up in half and try to sell it, but I do see an opportunity to um, upsell the market um, compared to other duplex. So I believe the rents should be having some kind of support. Um, and, and the other way, I mean, that's, that's the property itself. Um, there are some other takeaways that I, that I, that I have for this for this purchase, I, I, I guess it's the exploration of renovation, like depending on how we can renovate and exploring different options that's presented to me. Um, there are, the, the property offers quite a large range of potential. If I leave it as is in a pretty, pretty bad condition uh, right now for one unit, it's not terrible. Like, it, I mean, it's, it's not terrible, but it's not nice. Um, the, the rents can go quite low, right? I, I think it's, we are looking at 700, um, 750 max, right? And if I throw in a little bit, I can get a little bit better, but I'm also looking at more of an upscale version. And that's why the manager said, well, you might be able to get uh, 14 wow. um, because you're doing a nicer job. And that would including like, I'm painting everything, I have a new kitchen, new, new bathroom like new flooring and flooring i don't use carpets i right? and 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 more up to par um because i've done this type of renovations in my other portfolios and i always do them what i found is that yes i invest more but uh the the repair and maintenance cost will reduce significantly at least for the next few years right. so whatever i have very conservatively put will significantly reduce. So my NOI should increase quite substantially. So that's a, that's a balance to, to kind of to, to, to look at. Um, but also what I found is that in, in this neighborhood, um, there are some lower quality um, tenants, maybe the, the, like the profiles can be quite diverse. Mm -hmm. um, but as like, like how has you shown, it's, it's sort of the borderline. Right, so there are some pretty shady areas and there's some uh, better ones. Um, what I realized, or maybe at least what my strategy is, I want to filter out the not so good tenants through renovation. If I put up a nicer product, then I should attract a better clientele. Um, and which I've seen maybe in one or two buildings are like that, but the other, you know, two buildings down the road are pretty bad. So I want the bigger, like the, the better one and not, not, not the others. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, I'm contemplating. And, and, but if the upside in terms of rent uh, actually hold up, um, I might consider it. 
of course, uh, session eight is one consideration, uh, but I would imagine the, um, that the tenant profile might be questionable depending on the situation and they tend to stay for a long time. Um, to me, that I'd rather have some kind of movement um, allowing me to price the rent up to market. Uh, so you know, ideally I want the tenant to be maybe two or three years in and, and they move out so that I can bring the, the rent up to market. Um, so anyways, these well, are my thinking points. Right, uh, so, so a couple of things there. So first of all, um, just because you have a section 810 doesn't mean you can't increase rent. Um, it just might mean that the program not, might not pay for the rent increase, but that could uh, be shifted off to the tenant either way. Um, so there's that. Um, I wanted to just want, run really quickly some numbers um, with these the renovation and what you think you can get out of here. Let's run a performa. So these renovations that you want to do to really put it upscale, uh, really bring it to the top of the market. How, how much are those renovations expected to cost, do you think, Julius? 40,000. 40,000. So if we go at a purchase of 67 and we add in 40,000, that means we're all in for this investment at 107. Okay, 107,000. But if we do that work and we're expecting to make 14 a month on each side, okay, let's be just a little bit more conservative because that would be just a home run. But let's say 13 per side. We have 12 months in the year and we use this factor of 0 0.6. But when we start hitting those top markets, it might actually even be 0 0.65 or something like this. But again, staying conservative, we have 18, um, 18 19,000 a year and that we were in for 107,000. Is that about right? So we're looking and I did chop the numbers down a little bit, right? Just to say, but this is a 17 cap project. Pretty sweet. And you're absolutely right. Higher renovation, higher rental amounts will filter out, you know, the, 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 the less good tenants. And that that thousand dollar mark, right? When your rents are above a thousand, you know, there's there's a psychological shift when people can pay under a thousand versus but when people can pay over a thousand, it's a natural selection that happens. So uh, that's awesome. So Julius, I don't know if you've been looking at the chat there, but we have uh, Savi who says deal. We have Lori. We have Maries. We have all these people are telling you deals, deal, deal. So um, congratulations, Julius. Is there anything you'd like to add? Let's see if there was, uh, yeah, um, Krishan uh, says that's a deal as well. Uh, Nathaniel, maybe this is a good question. Um, Achu says good deal. Nathaniel is saying, um, how did you come across this deal, Julius? Flora says deal. How did I come across? I, um, well, I guess I got, I'm in touch with a number of gatekeepers. So they're sending me deals and everything. Uh, but but this is a newer one. I think I not have have not dealt with them before. But I, I don't know how I came across because I, I answer, you know, I send out so many emails and, and one kind of bounce back and 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 just say hey we we we've, we've got a property like this to look at. But in fact, the, the, at the beginning, um, this deal was quite unique because it came with a uh, a seller financing. Mm -hmm. In fact, and facts, right? Basically, um, I will, I will only have to assume the mortgage. Um, so, in fact, I can just pay twenty percent down um, to for for this deal. And the the existing mortgage was around five point something percent uh, for a thirty year. So it's very attractively priced in terms of the interest rate um, perspective. Um, but the the price was was higher, and I don't remember the original, but something around 75 or near 75 K um, for the total cost. And basically I went into the deal and say, okay, I'm happy to take on um, with, with the financing. I know Kyle, you, you, you love that, right? Like generally we have to negotiate a few steps before to getting to that point. But this one just you know, came right out of the gate. So obviously I took it. Then, then actually I got a phone call. The, uh, the, the wholesaler wants to uh, get this deal closed 
almost it was it was during Christmas time, but he wanted to close like 10 days after New Year. So it's like less than 10 business days. And I said, well, that's really, really rushed. If we have to do these legal paperwork and everything, assuming the mortgage, I, like you guys have to go through the bank, right? The, the bank has to review it, right? There's, there's a process to go through. And I said, you, you, you cannot get this done in such a time frame. And basically at that point, he said, oh, well, uh, we have it under contract for um, until that date, right? Like, and the, the sell is very difficult. And if we extend it, you know, he might just walk away. So I sensed that the, uh, the wholesale might lose the deal. So then I said, well, if I don't get the opportunity to work on this, right? I mean, it's beyond our control here. Um, what if I give the cash offer? So I kind of brought the price down. Um, so that's how it's, it's kind of funny that how I negotiate backward to to a, to a, to a cash deal. Yeah, that, that is, it is quite often um, interesting. We we had we had a number of conversations about it, and uh, at the end of the day, I think either way was a was a good deal. Uh, strong cash flow to be had in either case. Um, just know that when people sell on terms, if they're offering financing up front. Um, it, it's, it's, it's one of two things, either they're very motivated or they're very savvy <laughs> that they want to sell at a much higher price because of the terms, uh, the easier access in for the, uh, for the buyer. And so, so it could be a double-edged sword, but, uh, that's why we always say start with cash and land on terms. Uh, but in this case, they started with terms and we landed on cash, but everyone's happy and everyone's walking away with, uh, with a piece of that pie. So Good, good for everyone. Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Any any final thing to add on this, uh, Julius? I think this is a fun deal. I'm I'm looking forward to it uh, and see the potential of this property. Um, and I think one of the challenge was to look for a uh, a, a relevant calm because mm -hmm. uh, I mean I think we were able to find something very close uh, on that street, which is a duplex. But nothing really like if at the A2, right? a four bedroom is rather unique. Yeah. Uh, so finding a calm or the exact calm was a little bit challenging. But if I kind of look at that, if some of the, the six, um, like the six twos are selling at at least 80K in the neighborhood, right? I am pretty confident that this this one would, would be worth more than that, mm -hmm. um, right? And plus, like I said, this is kind of like a semi-detached, very different than the other duplex. So that should also offer some kind of premium. So yeah. with that, I'm more comfortable to say if I put in higher renovation expenses or investment in it, um, you know, the cap rate still makes sense, then I can still potentially shoot for higher valuation when the appraisal comes. Absolutely. And if you're able to bump it just over the 100,000 mark, you got a ton of financing, refinancing options available to you. And I want to, want to put one last comment regarding these four ones, these eight two duplexes. Um, they're wonderful. They're, they're, they're rare and they're, 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 they can be pearls in a portfolio because um, either you, like Julius is doing, you go top of market, all right? And four twos, I mean, four ones are just, you know, rarer and so they're more desirable and you can get the higher rent on the private pay but also similarly in the subsidized programs like section eight or eden or whatever they're rare there too and there's a strong demand there too and you don't need to go over the top to to get the same four bedroom voucher whether it's you know just bare livability or top of the line that voucher is the same amount and so this could be a good opportunity not to go top of the line or as a backup, right? Maybe maybe uh, you go top of the line and for the next five years, you get someone at 1400 a month and you're just, you're milking that cow, it's beautiful. And then after that, they kind of, you know, they they lived in the property, they lived the property well, and now you need kind of need to freshen it up. Uh, well, maybe you don't want to redo all these things. Maybe you just touch it up. Maybe you just put a thousand or two and then put it on a section eight program and still get very close to the same rents. And this time it's guaranteed subsidized rents because that voucher, that four bedroom voucher is a, um, could be another gold mine to, uh, to explore without putting in large renovations into it. 
So either way, with with four bedroom apartments like that, you have a lot of options, which is which is awesome. Awesome. Well, good deal. Congratulations. I think we have a consensus here, Julius. We have a deal and hopefully we'll have another deal for you this weekend. Not in Cleveland for a bus tour, but this weekend, actually starting tomorrow, we're doing our first epic bus tour in Florida. And so that's super exciting. It's a precursor or as a side event to our blueprint, teaching you all those basics of investing in U.S. real estate. And uh, that was our deal reveal for this evening. If you would like your deal featured on our deal reveal, just reach out to us by email or on our website. Give us the address, as much or as little information as you want, and we'll put you in the queue and we'll reveal your deal. Have the community vote, deal or no deal. You're very welcome, Julius and Nathaniel. Thank you, Nathaniel says it's a great deal, Julius. So thank you everyone. Have yourself a magical evening. And as always, I'm gonna invite you to do now or tomorrow. Take care, everyone.